Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to K and K Real Talk. This is episode ten. Um, we are so excited to be here with you. Hi, Kristen. I'm so happy to be here with you again. Hi. How are you doing? It's a beautiful Monday here. Is it? Yeah, it's gorgeous here. It will. It's hot. That's what it is here. Hot. It's hot here too. <laughs> it's really hot here too. Yeah, but pretty. I'll take the pretty. I'll take the pretty in the heat. <laughs> um, all right, so today we are diving into fear of intimacy and losing my partner. We've seen you ladies talk about this um, multiple times. And so last time while we talked about painful sex, and we are gonna review a couple of the key points from the last video, just in case this is the first video you're seeing, and also because it's so important. So before we dive in, by the way, um, Kristen is our founder of Endometriosis and Me, and I am Kenny King. I am your resident health and wellness coach, as well as transformational life coach. So um, stay connected to us both. You know, give us some comments. Let us know what you're loving about this series, and let us know what you'd like us to talk about. So today, fear of intimacy and losing my partner. We see this over and over, and it's heartbreaking we see what am i supposed to do what if my partner leaves me what if i can't have sex and um the emotional turmoil the guilt the everything that's created from that is so disheartening and i know um both kristen and i have experienced this in different aspects so what we're gonna do is just sort of share, you know, a little bit of three of the major components that we found to be the most supportive. And the first one is communication. And this one, a lot of times we think we're communicating and we're really not. So we might say no, or not right now, or I'm, or I'm in pain, but we don't always really open up to what we're feeling. And so what we would love to encourage you to do is if this is a partner, like a real partner, like a relationship, this is hopefully a safe space for you to communicate. So, um, you know, and I know there was one point in my life where there was so much like guilt and shame wrapped up into this that I couldn't even, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't dare say exactly what was going on or exactly what hurt or what I was afraid of or how I was so tense that, you know, um, that even the thought of it was, was painful. So I wouldn't even get to the point of actually, um, being able to be intimate. And, but I also wasn't saying what was going on. I would just say, Oh, I have a medical issue and leave it at that. And by the way, if that's where you are, that is enough. I'm not saying you, you have to bear your soul necessarily, but I am saying that this is your intimacy as well. This is your connection with your partner. This isn't just about your partner. This is about you. And there's this space where we start to feel isolated or lonely or like, well, I can't have sex. So, you know, I'm never going to be able to again or whatever. It, we get a little bit um, worked up in our diagnosis and committed to our pain, if that makes sense. So this, this communication piece, taking the steps to really share how you feel and sometimes prefacing it by, by saying what you feel before you share the experience. An example of this might be like, this is really uncomfortable for me to share, but I'm feeling really guilty because I feel like I'm not doing my part in our relationship in terms of how frequently we do or don't have sex, or this is really uncomfortable for me to share, but this position I'm okay and this position I'm really not okay, so can we avoid this for a while, or this speed, or this, what you know, whatever it is for you, and you may need to have a lot of conversations before you can get that communication out, before you can really, um, really share that part of yourself. So this can be uncomfortable. This is gonna be a really uncomfortable conversation, but it's kind of like, uh, I, Kristen, you might remember a quote better than me, but there's some sort of quote out there that's like, if you can't talk about it, 
you're probably not close enough to even be doing it in the first place. I can't even remember where that comes from. But, um, but Kristen, what are your thoughts? Have you had moments like this where you've been scared to communicate or where you've held back communicating for your own fear or shame or guilt or, or anything at all? I've definitely had like guilt for not having sex enough. Um, especially after my hysterectomy, I was like really scared to do like anything really. I was like, oh my God, everything's going to be different. So I don't want to do it. <laughs> but you just, you get over that fear with the communication is talking to your partner and being like, hey, I'm weirded out right now. Can we talk about it? <laughs> And like, you need to be open enough to talk about anything, embarrassing, hilarious, anything that happens. We're all human. Yeah, I love that. I love the embarrassing and the hilarious piece because sometimes we forget about that. People who don't have endo, who don't have painful sex, who don't have this level of stuff happening, that's even true for them, right? Like they often, sometimes they might experience um, embarrassment or humiliation or just old stuff, old fears that come up from rejections in the past or whatever that is. Like we are all human. We all have these quirks or these things and we're not always comfortable talking about things related to sex or related to our sexuality or related to what is actually happening for us. And so what Kristen and I are saying is be an advocate for yourself in this space because like I said earlier, this is not only about your partner. This is also about you. This is about you two together in a relationship, but this is about you, like you, yourself as a, as a human, as a woman, you deserve to experience pleasure. You deserve to relax into intimacy. You deserve to enjoy this part of of you at whatever level that is and at different times during your your endo journey it will be different but focusing on better being possible for you and this communication piece is really really crucial and what i want to add to that is don't feel as though you need to do this alone or by yourself or without support there of course you have um the the group the closed group um endometriosis and me to throw up me all of your your fears and to vent and to say this is where I am or this is what my partner did or said and and then you have all of these amazing endo sisters support you and the same thing in um in my closed group in the endometriosis nourish flourish thrive is the same thing come up and say this is where I'm hurting or this is where I'm stuck or that you know reach out for support um However, there's other pieces too. You can find um, support groups, especially if your condition feels very chronic. There are uh, chronic disease support groups. And I know Kristen's been working on an endometriosis support group. And I know that there are going to be, we are going to see support groups pop up for this, but there's online. Um, there are a lot of great connections. Where I would say though to focus is, solution-based efforts. I say this because I've been a part of and in a lot of support groups where it's only complaining and it's only what's wrong and we aren't always focused on what's going well, how could this be better, and what we don't want to see, what I don't want to see is you stay stuck. I don't want to see you stay where you are or, and that's what happens. It doesn't mean don't vent. It doesn't mean don't share where you really are. You're not supposed to walk around with this bright, shiny, positive attitude all the time or anything. You're allowed to be pissed off. You're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to be mad. You're allowed to have any feeling that you're feeling and to work through that and to process it and also focus on solutions so that you can feel better, so that you can get better, so that you can be in a relationship that suits you, so that you can be in a body that serves you, so that you can create this healing from the inside out. And so in addition to support groups, I want to throw out counseling because solo counseling, like counseling just for you, I actually believe everybody should have a counselor. I think everybody should have a counselor and a coach <laughs> because that's where I've seen the vastest growth in my own life. 
um, and in the lives of many and in the lives of a lot of my clients. So counselors can be really, really helpful. And I know a lot of people have had negative experiences with them. Not every counselor is for you. Um, it's the same thing with a coach. It's the same thing with a personal trainer. Like you don't go meet one and say, well, they're all crap. You, you find the one that's, that's yours. You find the one that's for you that resonates with you and you trust your gut and you, and you be transparent and you look for growth. And so, um, solo counseling and then couples counseling can be really, it's, I think it can be most useful if you have a counselor and your partner has a counselor and then the two of you do counseling together as well. That's another, you can do that too. So there's a lot of benefits here, but having somebody objective that's willing to look at all the messy darkness in you without any judgment and that is solution based, that can be really useful. And so that's just a, that's just a, you know, an area. So it's not just communication with your partner. It's true and genuine communication of where you are and communicating in a way so that you can create better for yourself. Um, was there anything, Kristen, you wanted to add to that or anything I missed on that? Just when you say like any, and have your feelings and any feeling that you have is valid because your feelings are valid. Just communicate that with your partner so that they are aware and are not like, why are you so mad or whatever? Just communicate that with your partner so then they're not confused. And it's okay to be mad and just be like, hey, I'm mad right now. Don't take anything personal. I'll be back to myself soon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's so funny. I used, I swear, I used to think, and I think many women can relate to this, I used to expect my partner to be a mind reader. <laughs> I would, and you know, like all these little things build and build and build and we make stuff. We make what other people think, say, and do about us when it doesn't have anything to do with us, but that's another topic for another day. And so we're like, well, you this or you that. And a lot of times they come off, well, you do this. And so you made me feel this way or whatever. And I would love to challenge you to make sure that when you, when you express where you are, just like Kristen was saying, if you're like, Hey, I'm mad right now, like need some space. I'll be back to myself soon or whatever. You can have a little sign. Ooh, we can make a shirt and it says be back soon. You can have that okay. shirt. And that's, yeah. how, you know, that's how your partner knows. They just don't ask you anything because you're <laughs> be back soon. We need to do that. Let's talk about that when your store, <laughs> when your shop opens with your endo gear. Do yeah, that. definitely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That'll be awesome. Anyway. Um, so having that, the, recognizing that nobody's supposed to just know and understand what the heck's going on in our heads. We don't understand what the heck is going on in our heads sometimes or why we think the way that we do or what's actually happening. And so this is a place to be really compassionate towards yourself and towards your partner. And if you're not sure how to communicate, write it, write a letter. Um, that can be really useful sometimes. So, um, so the next thing, and we did talk about this a little bit in the last video, and it was about creating intimacy. When it's like totally off the table, it is important to find ways of connection and intimacy with your partner so that the two of you still feel connected. And so this might be exploring, um, being willing to explore sexually where the boundaries are and what you can do that creates that connection and not the pain. And there's also non-sexual ways of creating closeness and intimacy with your partner. Determining, have you ever read uh, The Five Love Languages? Kristen, have you read that? I don't know. No, um, that's actually, that's a really good one. And that might be a good thing uh, to consider as a resource when you're really trying to, you and your partner are trying to learn what your love language is so that you know how to love each other. Um, it's really cool. There are five main ones and normally people are kind of like a category of two or three and there's a book and there's a, it's you, it's so easy. You can go online, look up a love languages quiz 
and do a quiz to give you an idea. And you can kind of make this fun with your partner um, to do, uh, to discover what is that person's love language. Because sometimes people are telling us they love us all day long and we don't see it or understand it because it's not in our language, it's in their own language. Because what do we do as humans? We assume that other people are like us or think like us or feel like us or have the same definitions of the world as we do, and that's just not true. So if somebody's love language is like acts of service, which is one of them, and so they're like going around and they're like making coffee and they're cleaning and they're picking stuff up for you or they're doing all these things for you, it's like an act of service. They're, they're wanting to do something. You'll, you'll see this in people who try to do surprise birthdays for you or try, you know, they're trying to make you feel special. But if your love language is words of affirmation, that's not going to translate as I love you as much as words of affirmation would. Does that make sense? So it, it, yeah, yeah. So that's a really fun resource if you want to check that out. And then another one, do I have it in here? I'm wondering. Another one is called, I'm going to mess up the name of this thing. It's called Vertelis. And it's just basically a little card game. It's V E R T E L. L I S <laughs> not a hundred percent sure, but Google it and you'll see it. It's a little card game. They created this for people to have more of a conversation. Um, but there's one for relationships and it's like, I know it's here in my office, but I don't know where, um, I'll add this to another, uh, another video. I'll show it on one of our next videos, but, um, anyway, Vertelis, and that means in some other language, it means like, tell me more love or please love tell me more is what it means. Um, and so it's basically these questions that you pose your partner and it's really cool. Some of it's dreaming into the future or reflecting in the past or something like, you know, what characteristic would you just kill to have that your partner has something about them. And it's just another great way to really get to know each other, what each other's wants and needs are, your desires to kind of dream together. And it's just another piece of intimacy. So there are tons of things out there, um, you know, date nights or one hour a week of just total connection and focus without any electronics, whatever that is for you. It might be getting out in nature. There are tons of things, um, but just finding these ways to explore physically, non-physically, how can we become closer? How can we have an exceptional relationship? How can we create intimacy and continue for better and better in a way that's loving and supportive? And um, so before we move on, I just wanted to check with you, Kristen, was there anything I missed there or any, anything you wanted to add? Um, no. No. Okay. Perfect. All right. So this last one is a little bit juicy because this last one is the one that's like, um, it's easy to get anybody. Well, it's easy for me to get riled up <laughs> on this because what we see is this, we see where so many women do not feel supported in their relationships. They're terrified. Um, and this might be you. So if your if your partner is showing dissatisfaction, um, if your partner is showing frustration, and that communication piece isn't happening, that makes sense, right? And you're not the only person responsible for the communication. There's two of you, um, but you're also not responsible for that person's feelings or ensuring that person's needs are met. It's the communication piece that you're each responsible for. So if your partner is not 100% on board to discuss both of your needs, um, to discuss where you are in the relationship and in this aspect of your relationship, if they're not on board with working with you through this, if you are with a partner who will not um, go to counseling with you or will not find ways of creating this communication, then you're not really in a partnership. You're not really in a relationship. 
And so this is where, and that doesn't feel good when you're in a non-supportive relationship to hear like you're in a non-supportive relationship and you might need to get out. And it's not my place or Kristen's place to say, mm -mm, you're not supposed to be with that person. Like sometimes we want to, like, I know Kristen, you have got to also like seeing all the posts, you've got to say, leave his ass or whatever. Right. Internally. <laughs> um, that's me too. And so that's that part of us that are compassionate. We love you. We want what's best for you. We want, we know what's possible for you. We know that it's possible for you to be in a relationship with somebody who, who cares for you and who will show up to be with you in this relationship. Um, and this is a fear that people have across the board with all of their different things that they bring to a relationship. Like when I met my husband, I told him it wasn't possible for us to fall in love um, because I was broken beyond repair and I didn't have it in me anymore to love someone. I didn't have it. That part of me was broken. So that wasn't going to happen. Don't get your hopes up. Um, I don't know how <laughs> we got to where we are now. We're in a completely different place. Well, I, mean, I do know how, I mean, the how is the communication. The how is, is being willing to show up with someone, no matter what their stuff is. Cause we all have baggage. I mean, that's just relationships. You don't just because sex is painful or you need to go, you need space um, physically from intercourse or physical intimacy. I mean, that is not new for, I mean, most humans go through that in one category or another. Think of, take yourself out of it, take endometriosis out of it. Consider if you were with somebody and one of the two of you has now been through a rape or physically traumatized in some way, or one of you at one point was, you were abandoned um, as a child by one of your parents. And because of that, you have severe intimacy issues. And so you create cycles of um, really toxic relationships or you create cycles of, uh, and obviously I'm talking to the people who are wanting to break out of the cycles. Clearly, if you're in it, you're in it. And when you're ready, if that's you, you can get out of that. You can break out of that. But it's similar. It's, it's similar because there are times in our lives that we need space to heal or even whenever there's been a betrayal or violation or hurt within the relationship, within two committed partners, maybe somebody said something and it really, it triggered something from a long time ago that had nothing to do with that person, but there's a whole lot of healing that needs to happen because the last thing you want to do is be touched by that person now because of something that's not even associated with them. These are all real things that happen to real people every single day. I see this in my work a lot where old wounds resurface or where people are like, my husband makes me like, makes my skin crawl. Can't even look at him, you know? And it, it doesn't always have to do with even your, the person, the, you know, it, it normally has stuff. There's stuff that's going on internally that we got to unravel. And so, but at the end of the day, this is where the partnership comes in. You deserve to be with a partner who's going to show up with you, who's going to listen and who's going to work through. If you are unwilling to communicate with your partner, what your needs are, what your wants are, what your desires are, what you need physically, mentally, emotionally, all those things. And by the way, your partner is not responsible for meeting all of your needs. You are not your partner. But that doesn't mean that together you can't determine how can we best support each other's needs and then where, and then ensuring, well, how do you get those needs met separately from me? You know, it, it, this is all communication. So, um, so coming back to that, if you're the unwilling, then you're not acting as a full partner in your relationship. And if your partner is unwilling to bring their full selves into support of your relationship and your, and your intimacy within your relationship, then that's not a full partner. You don't have a full partner. And there are moments where you might need to evaluate, do I, do I have a full partner? Do I want a full partner? If you want a full partner and you don't currently have a full partner, you may need to create some space for yourself. I'm not saying give up on that person or leave or whatever. I'm not saying 
I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just simply saying you may need to create space for you to determine what you need, what you want, what's next for you, what's best for you. And if that person is not going to step up to the plate and, and be there, they don't have to be like you, but if they're not going to be there in terms of your relationship, you don't have a partner and you may need to reevaluate what's going on here because life is short. Life is fleeting. You don't know when it's over. So there's just, there's not time to waste. There's just not. Um, and, and sometimes we feel stuck and I'll challenge that too, because we're not ever stuck. We always have a choice. There's always possibility. There's always, maybe you don't change everything overnight, but there is always possibility for better. And, um, we're, we're not stuck, not fully, not without our own permission. So there's my soapbox topic for the day. <laughs> um, I do want to check in with you, Kristen. I know I just, you know, threw on a bombshell and a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, what are any thoughts that come up for you um, with that? Just the specific communication. Mm -hmm. I know that we said it a lot, but that is so important. Um, so many women say that their partner did say, did leave or wants to leave because of lack of sex or because of the endo specifically. It's, that's not the actual reason. The actual reason is lack of communication. And when you bond in any kind of intimate way, like watching a movie, cuddling, or just like rubbing each other's backs or things like that, there's so many other things that you can do to build that intimacy and that, that communication. Like always, always talk about everything. I mean, they, they should be your best friend. You should want to tell them everything. They need to communicate with you how they feel about your feelings and like vice versa. It, it like, I can't express enough how important it is to talk to your partner. Um, a couple things that I wanted to say that you could try to make sex a little like more e easy or, or more pleasurable to try is pelvic floor therapy. If you can get access to a physiotherapist or a doctor that can do that or dilators, which are just like small pieces of I think it's silicone or there's different ones. Basically it looks like a little dildo and you go from the smallest to bigger ones just to like kind of get used to it. And um, if you can get a prescription or if it's legal in your state or um, you have a medical prescription here in Canada. I definitely recommend medical marijuana in any way. You can get different lubes and different suppositories and bath bombs and so many different things that may help relax that area. And and in regards to the sex. Um, Try to have a lot more foreplay and just like love each other. Just remember what you love about each other and bond and just be like teenagers again. Like pretend that you are just young and free and don't don't be so serious. Don't overthink it so much. Like I know that. When we're thinking, we get all tensed up and thinking about all of our bad experiences. But why are, if you think about your good experiences and relax, it's going to be a lot more pleasurable for both of you. So it can get, it definitely can get better. There's, it, it, it doesn't always have to be painful. Like even if, it, if, if you have to take um, medication before to, or you have to do things to prep for mm -hmm. it, um, then do it. There's no rules on how you 
get ready for and have sex. What, find what works for you and what works for your partner. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that brought up something for me. It made me remember you can date and even have an affair with your partner. <laughs> like you can bring back that fun, spontaneous mystery. Um, and you can reconnect with them in different ways so that it feels fresh and new. And on top of uh, what you just mentioned about, you know, getting ready, I know before we talked a little bit about like relaxing techniques, hot baths, some of those things um, as well. And, you know, just coming back to that place of, I've talked with a lot of women who have, and I don't want to go too much into this because this could be a whole other video, <laughs> video too, but you know, I, there are so many women out there who don't really know what their pleasure is, like what turns them on, what they've almost always, it's been like sex is like a chore and I just do it because it's, you know, um, because it's expected of me or because, and so keep in mind that this video and last video, we're talking about you honoring your pleasure. And if you're not a hundred percent sure um, what that is, that's a really excellent space for exploration. Exploring what does turn you on, what does relax you, what does help you feel really connected to your partner so that together you can create this dynamic of, of um, sharing that with each other and deepening your communication and intimacy. And so, so these are just really, I think a lot of little, a lot of little tidbits and pieces as long as you're in a relationship where you're both communicating and honest and coming to the table with love and support you're in a relationship that can get better and better and better and that's including the department of um, intimacy so. make it fun make it fun it's not a chore it's fun mm -hmm. go to a sex shop mm -hmm. go to a sex shop with your partner it could be really fun. Absolutely. And if you're like, you ladies don't know what you're talking about, I hate sex or yada yada, or it is a chore or whatever, that's something to definitely talk to a counselor about or a coach. There are a lot of coaches who are, um, uh, that are focused on sexual health. I'm not one of those coaches, but I do know one of those coaches. So if you want to reach out to me and you need some support in that area, I know who to send you to. So, um, because you do deserve to experience pleasure, to experience um, sexual intimacy and pleasure and closeness and all of the things that come with it. Because all of this, this isn't about you being able to please your partner. This is about you. That's what it's about. And that's who we're advocating for is you. That's who we're here for. So, um, so communication, creating intimacy, and recognizing, am I in a partnership? Am I in a real partnership? And if I'm not, bye, Felicia. <laughs> I didn't know how else to put that. Um, so yeah, yeah. What do I want? What do I want in my relationship? What do I want in a partner? And um, you get to have that. So there's that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with that. I'm going to close it there. So um, thank you so much for being here with us, ladies. I'm not sure how long this one was. We might have ran over, but that's okay. We've decided just to get on here and chat. This is for you. So if you got to watch them in, in two um, sit downs, that's fine. Uh, let us know again um, how these videos are landing for you. If you have questions, if you had any aha moments or big takeaways, and also let us know if there are things that you want to us to chat about, us to dive deeper into. Again, you can find and connect directly with Kristen at uh, the closed group, Endometriosis and Me. Um, same title of her website, www.endometriosisandme.com. You can find me over at Kenny Rochelle Coaching. Um, you can send me a straight friend request and also Endometriosis Nourish, Flourish, Thrive. We stay solution-based. We do 
um, tons of challenges and fun stuff. And if you're just wanting like 60 minutes focused just on you to have a breakthrough around thriving with endo, reach out to me, let me know. Um, I would love to do that with you. I'm offering those for free for all of the endometriosis and me community. So we're so glad you're here. We love you guys to pieces and we will see you next week. Bye guys.